the ability to differentiate between my grief and my trauma. Ta-da! Still terrible lighting. <laughs> um, it is like 7.30 p.m. The sun is down, so the lighting's gonna suck. But I figured I wanted to talk about this now while it's fresh in my mind. I'm going to put on my makeup and you guys are gonna come along with me for the ride because I am going to a pub show tonight and I feel like it's gonna be one of those nights where I'm gonna need all of my like sensory tools that I've put together for myself, which I'll make a video about that another day. One of my symptoms uh, is like sensory issues in general. And uh, today it's been like pretty heightened. Yeah, today's been not a bad day. Bad is a strong word for today because I've been in a good mood and I got a lot of stuff done, but it was one of those days where I had a lot of flashbacks and had a lot of dread about the past. That's something that I don't think I talk about too much on this channel. There's anxiety, yeah, but the best way I can really think to describe it is I'm dreading something that's already happened to me. It's just a sense of dread, like, oh my god, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. And it already happened. <laughs> it's basically exactly what a flashback sounds like. You're stuck in the moment. It's real for you in that moment. You're there. It's happening as you are dreading it in the future. <laughs> and it's weird. I'm not a big fan. A good example is yesterday. Yesterday we got a whole bunch of snow. I had to drive somewhere and as I was walking out to my car, here comes a little trigger warning. Yeah, go away if you are gonna be triggered by this because it's not worth it. Okay, anyway, I could not stop picturing my mother's dead body going out to my car. And the only thing that kept on going through my head was that I was going to die. That happens to me quite a lot. I think it was because I remembered that the roads were going to be pretty awful to drive on. And for some reason, that's linked to death in my mind. Uh, probably the car accidents I've been in in the past did that to me. So that was my yesterday. For my own protection, I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> that was my powder opening. But uh, there's certain individuals who have traumatized me in my past. And just seeing their name and their voice, I mean, seeing their name, hearing their voice, seeing their face, anything to do with them, anything that reminds me of them, isn't a good time. Brings me right back into several different moments simultaneously. That's another thing. Flashbacks can be layered. Um, I don't know if that's just me, or if it's a thing that happens to a lot of people, I will flash back to multiple moments at the same time. Especially if one trigger <laughs> triggers a whole bunch of uh, separate things. I get brought back to all of them at once, sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And today was one of the days where that happened and I wasn't exposed to any triggers for this particular trauma. Unless it was like super subtle and it's not something that I've identified yet. It's hard to explain. <laughs> it's hard to explain to people in your life because sometimes you bring up how holidays are hard and then this person that you're speaking to might say like, holidays are hard for anybody. Yeah, but I'm trying to open up to you right now. Just a lot of people don't get it, so it's hard to talk about. And I don't even know what the point of this video is. I guess I just wanted to talk about it. From now on, if I feel like I'm not going to be present and in my body for the whole experience, I'm not gonna get into my car because it's not safe. That might mean missing out on some stuff, but that's just how it's gonna have to be because I would rather be alive than not. <laughs> it's hard to have a good day but also have multiple flashbacks. Usually I can, like on a good day, I can just kind of ignore it and squash it down. But today the trauma was just like tossing pebbles at my window and uh, it didn't chip the glass, but it got kind of annoying. And uh, usually I'm able to acknowledge it and then push it away. <laughs> but today I acknowledged it and it pushed back. Which is just a thing that's gonna happen. It's just the nature of the beast, but 
I'm not a huge fan of it. The more I think about it, the more excited I am to get my service dog <sighs> because it'll mean that I can do things, <laughs> essentially. I can do things and know that I'll be able to uh, get out of the situation safely and get into situations safely and just be safer in general. That might sound dramatic because like, oh, it's just a mental thing, it's fine. It's not, it's not just a mental thing. <laughs> like, it's not just a mental thing. And also there are physical symptoms. <sighs> I am really nervous about the holidays this year. I'm gonna be having family Christmas with my mother's side of the family for the first time ever. Um, since I was a little kid, six or something. And it's gonna be really nice. That's not a trauma thing, that's a grief thing. I hate doing online. Whatever, good enough, it's gonna be dark in there anyway. A really useful tool that I have found that I have is the ability to differentiate between my grief and my trauma. How would I describe the feeling? Grief is almost heavier than trauma for me personally because I guess for me personally, grief is something that I carry and trauma is just part of me, if that makes sense. The grief is more of a memory and a feeling and the trauma is more of an experience, a never ending experience. Something that my therapist gets me to do quite often is tell her when I'm experiencing this trauma. She gets me to tell her where I'm experiencing it in my body. So uh, I guess today my flashbacks came to me <laughs> in my head, obviously, but I feel it a lot in my throat. What is my dog eating? What are you eating? And my chest. It uh makes me freeze. It's the uh, fight, flight, or freeze thing. <sighs> this one is definitely freeze. And just all day, like my lungs are frozen, like I want to breathe but it's really hard and my heart will start to kind of race a little bit and just general like panic attack, anxiety attack things, but it doesn't go that far. It's just a constant state of like <laughs> <laughs> It's not my favorite and I don't know if any of this video makes any sense. I guess if you're going through anything similar to this, um, you're not alone because I too experience it. I think it's something that we don't discuss enough when we talk about PTSD. A lot of what we talk about is how it gets better. It doesn't get better. <laughs> you just get smarter. You learn how to avoid triggers. You learn how to get a grip on your anxiety for long enough to escape the situation. And sometimes you get service dogs. I've been doing a lot of research for the last almost six months. Like that's when I started seriously considering it and looking into it. I can't wait. It's honestly gonna change my life. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's gonna change my life. And I guess that's all I really wanted to say is <laughs> I am having a hard time right now and I will continue to have a hard time. But having this extra tool and companion will make the hard time a little bit easier to swallow.